Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at the Yakima Stage 2 2 bike platform rack right here on our 2022 Toyota Tundra. So this Stage 2 is a heavy duty bike rack from Yakima. It has a great weight capacity for your heavy electric bikes. You have it where this is offset so that your bikes of different shapes and sizes can fit onto the rack and make it easier for you to carry them around. So we're gonna talk about those features, but we're gonna focus on our truck here today. That way you can see what is the best fit for you, your different types of bikes, and your Toyota Tundra. The first feature we'll take a look at is the tilt away feature. So we have this lever right here, and you're gonna to wanna to use two hands to pull that lever. But once you pull it, you can just let it drop down to a tilt. Why would you tilt your bike rack away? Well if you want to get into your truck bed. So let's take a look here to see if we have clearance with our tailgate and that's fully lowered. We can fully lower our tailgate, hop into our truck bed, grab whatever we need. And once we have, we just bring this back up. That's really nice to see because then you're not losing your truck bed access even with bikes behind your truck. And then once you've gotten what you needed from your truck bed, you just lift up on the rack and there is going to be a latch there. You're gonna to have to lift till you hear it. There we go. That holds it in place. You're gonna to have to lift it a little bit higher than normal because notice our shank rise. That way your bikes sit higher up off the ground, making it easier to maneuver around each other. But what types of bikes can you carry with a stage two? Well, you can carry your heavy electric bikes since this has a capacity of up to 60 pounds. But if you are taking this truck off-roading, that does decrease to 36 pounds per bike. So keep that in mind before you hit those trails. But other than your electric bikes, there's also those different shapes and sizes you have to think about. So you have two ways or two touch points for your bikes. The one in the back is gonna be your rear wheel strap. That also has a little bit of a cradle to it. We'll take a look at that later. And in the front, we have our front wheel mount. So I like pretty much any bike that has that front wheel mount just because it makes it so much easier to mount and dismount your bikes. This one also has a lock on the end of that mount that goes around your front wheel, your frame, and into this anchor point. That way your bikes are safe and secure. But when you wanna take your bike off, you actually start at the rear wheel strap. You just press the lever and then that disengages that strap, allowing you to lift it up. I try to like slide this out of the way so it doesn't get caught up in the spokes before I go over to the front and I hold on to the bike as I release that front wheel mount. So you just press that button, lift up on that mount, push that out of the way. And from here, you can grab the bike. And if you have the additional ramp, you can put that on the end. It makes it a lot easier with your truck and your heavier bikes. With the bike off, we get to take a closer look at the rack itself. So we have this rear cradle. This has a strap, so a little bit of an upgrade from something like the Kuat NV, which just has a strap. You have these little supports here for your tires. This goes around your wheel and secures it. If you slide this all the way to the end, the maximum wheelbase you can carry with this bike rack is gonna be up to 52 inches. Then you have your front wheel cradle. So then notice how this chalk has those different tire width grooves. And that's gonna be if you have, let's say your thin road bike tires or your wider fat bike tires. The maximum tire width you can carry with this is going to be up to 3.25. You can actually carry larger tires, but you are going to have to get the separate fat tire adapter. And then we have our front wheel mount. So whether you have a carbon fiber frame or a step through frame or a kid's bike or a women's bike, because this secures it by the front wheel, it makes it so much easier. You don't have to get a separate adapter. So you also have the option of adding on to this rack, especially the one which has a two inch shank. So if you feel like in the future you're gonna need to upgrade, you can get the two bike add-on and then you can carry up to four bikes with this rack. But on this its own, it is gonna add a little bit of length to the back of your truck. Let's take some measurements. Measuring from the end, our bumper, to the handle that sits at 40 inches. 
So that's a measurement to keep in mind if you already have a small garage or you're parking into a, to a tight spot because you do have a bigger truck that may be a measurement that's very important. Now let's take a look at ground clearance. So usually ground clearance is important for smaller vehicles because they don't want their bikes to hit the ground. In the case of our truck here, ground clearance is going to be important because how high are you lifting your bikes? So from the ground to the rear tray, it's 31 and a half inches that you're going to have to lift your bike. To the front tray, it's 28 inches. And compare that to the shank, which is 18 inches. So it does have that shank rise. So your bikes are kind of leveled there. So if you are lifting your extra heavy 60 pound bikes, I do highly recommend getting that ramp just to make it easier for you. Now, what if you're not planning on going out for a bike ride just yet, but you also don't want to take your bike rack off? Or if the bike rack in its open position doesn't fit into your garage, but you want to get it all set up. What you can do is move this or fold this up into the compact or portable position. Remember that lever we had to pull earlier? Well, pull that again, but this time, instead of letting it drop, you're gonna wanna lift up on the rack. Let's try that again. There we go. Now lift up on the rack. It is kinda heavy, but once you have it up there, it's gonna snap into place. Let's take some measurements. So your closest point is gonna be pretty far away. It's gonna be from the bumper to that front cradle, and that's four and a half inches away from the truck. The length this now adds to the back of our vehicle is gonna be from the bumper to that mast, I guess. It's 14 inches. So big difference compared to when this is folded down. You'll want it in this position when you're driving around town and you don't wanna take up more space than your big old truck already does. But what is it like living with a bike rack behind your truck all the time? We'll notice with it folded up like this, it doesn't go above the tailgate. So that's going to be completely visible. Also, your tail lights are visible. You do kind of cover your license plate though, but that's just going to be normal with pretty much anything on your hitch. You do have your backup camera right over here. It actually sits above the bike rack a little bit. But what's going to happen is since you have that really nice view from the back of your truck, you are going to be able to see your bike rack behind you, but you'll also be able to see the rest of the vehicles and scenery behind you. Now make sure you get the correct Yakima stage two because there's two types. One is going to have an inch and a quarter shank. The other one has a two inch shank. You're going to want that two inch shank because that fits right into your two inch hitch receiver. This has a little bit of a safety pin that goes over to the driver's side. What really tightens it down is going to be this knob. So this, as you turn it, it extends, I believe, a wedge inside your hitch receiver, creating an anti rattle effect. That way, as you shake it back and forth, you go over those bumps and do those movement on the road. It's going to be a really solid bike rack. It's a heavy bike rack, too, so it should be solid. That knob also has a lock core at the end, which is going to be key to like to the lock cores for your bikes. That way you only need to use one key to access both your bikes and the bike rack itself. So my personal thoughts about this bike rack is it's definitely a heavy duty bike rack. If you're carrying heavy bikes, if you're carrying large mountain bikes, if you're carrying step through e-bikes, this is gonna be great for that because you have all those different features making sure that it's gonna be a stable ride even with your big old truck. This is actually very similar to the Kuat NV in that you can get an additional ramp and you have a similar weight capacity. The main difference is gonna be if you are a fan of Yakima, you'll wanna get everything heat alike with your current Yakima accessories and if you have a preference in terms of style. Speaking of style, you can actually get this in two different colors. What I have here is the black, but you can also get this in a vapor or a gray version. Check that out here at eTrail.com to see which one you like a little bit more. You saw how solid it was when I was trying to shake it around, but let's take a look at how it looks on our test course. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. 
Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. And that was a look right here at our Yakima Stage 2 2 bike platform rack here on our 2022 Toyota Tundra.